writing cassowary and fruit bat was a very long, slow process, but it ended up being one of my favorite songs that I've written. Cook is really, he's really finding some amazing ground to pull his craft from. Cassowaries are five foot tall-ish birds that don't fly. They're related to ostriches and emus. Fruit bats are sometimes called flying foxes because uh, they, they look like little foxes. Their faces have those cute long snouts. I think long after a visit to the Nature and Science Museum and having seen the diorama, it's just sort of stuck in my subconscious. One day when I was working at this melody that needed words, those are the words that fell in. Cassowary saw the fruit that fly uh, The first line of the song is the first line that I thought of, which is, Cassowary saw the fruit bat fly, and that alone already presents this injustice because she's a bird and he's a mammal and she can't fly. So built right into that first line, he had this nice universal theme. I think he's really able to capture the sort of essence and put that into music. At that time, we started working on the song with the band, and I recorded all the rehearsals. So I would edit together different parts from different takes. I think it didn't feel right for a while, and yeah, it was like learning to fly when we didn't have wings. We were like trying to. <laughs> I do remember working on the song in practice quite a bit. He had this sort of complete song, but it was a lot shorter. The song kept getting extended because the plot hadn't been resolved yet and we needed more lyrics to finish the story. As the lyrics developed, the song would shape itself. I thought a lot about the story that Cook was presenting, the, the cassowary and the fruit bed, and what it feels like to be a cassowary you know, what kind of environment they're in, what, it, what it's like to want to do something and not be able to do it because you're limited by external forces. And of course, Cook was illustrating that with his like dopey, awkward piano parts that were contrasted by the more major sounding, flighty, ethereal dream world rhythm. Months before the writing process had started, we had recorded a, a piece that I had called Flight because it had this feeling of, of release. And so when the cassowary writing process hit that point in which we needed a, a part like that, I knew right where to go. Cassowary was kind of the first time that the four of us had done that together. Maybe that's why it took us a little while to get going, because we were like exploring new territory, you know? I definitely think that there was an evolution in like the band relationship because of that song. And I love when songs like that come along where they just like change the band dynamic. Near the end of the writing process for Cassowary and Fruit Bat, Cook wanted to have a section where the Cassowary and Fruit Bat were singing directly to one another. And so he wrote those lyrics and we arranged that part and I asked our friends Julie Davis and Joseph Pope to come over and record the parts as those characters. Is it all a dream or is it happening? No, my chickadee, you're not asleep. You've got all your life to soar. You've got all my love to keep. At the same time, we wanted to replace one of the cello layers with trumpet. And so I asked Sean King from Debochka to come over and record those trumpet parts as well. Uh, once the song was finished, we knew pretty soon that we would want to have a animated music video made for it. And we had talked about what what it would look like animated or what it would look like in the storybook. And luckily, a good friend, Adam Singer, is a brilliant animator and was up for it. The first time I heard Cassowary, I was thinking about it logistically and I was thinking about how long it was going to take to make this video for such a long song, a six minute song. <laughs> So we met a couple times and it was clear that he had everything already kind of finished in his head. However, it's just a really long process. I mean, he had done a lot of storyboarding to just make sure the shots would all work. Adam's process 
making this video started with an animatic. Just from these simple line drawings, it was really clear how he understood the story and I was just super impressed. And he got this vision onto paper that we were all trying to have. It was obvious that he immediately connected with it and that he immediately knew what the interplay between the drums and the piano and the guitar and the bass, he knew what all those things meant and they put pictures in his head that were similar to really what we were all thinking when we were writing the song. Adam had this uncanny knack for creating imaginative shots that complemented Cook's lyrics. That was a huge step of the process actually doing the animatic, um, but it's a really important one. And then after that, I started working on character design. After character design was finished, I started building the characters and rigging them and putting them together. The process of building the characters was a lot like it would be for any 3D show or movie you might see now where they build the model, they rig it, they, they attach a skeleton to it so that it can be moved. They're built out of geometry. They're a mesh a mesh of polygons, rectangles, and you have to put those rectangles together in a way so that they will um, bend against each other nicely when the body moves. At that point I had worked out with Ian that he was going to help build environment elements. We made a list and he asked if I would help build these elements, and I did. <laughs> Sat down with the animatic, which is one of the reasons the animatic is necessary, and uh, just basically made a giant list of all the elements that needed to be made. We needed the clouds, we needed a sun, we needed a moon, we needed several dozen elements. And just looking at that list, we just decided, okay, this is gonna be this, this will be made out of paper. One of the things I made for the video are these little shrubs out of cut and rolled construction paper. A lot of the trees in the background are made out of pieces of driftwood that I found and clippings of juniper that we wired onto the branches. There's one special tree that I made out of cardboard and I glued pieces of bark to it. Um, bark which came from a tree in my parents' backyard, the same one that the tree on the Falafel cover is made out of. We made a flying fish just to add to the cassowary's frustration, like, oh, there's a mammal that can fly. Hey, oh, there's a fish that can fly too. I don't know how he came up with it, but when I got there, he had put together this, this form of a cliff made out of cardboard pieces that he'd cut out and then I uh, wrapped that with crumpled butcher paper that I painted like red earth layers of rock in. And he had this huge roll of butcher paper that he was um, going to paint on and glue to the side of the cardboard in a wrinkled way to look like grooved rock. The bird's eye view of the river is an actual 3D map kind of thing. The cliff top was added digitally at the end, so we left that blank except for some green paper around the rim so that I could key it out easily. And then we added some moss. A good friend of mine let us use his studio space here in Denver uh, where he has a roll of blue screen paper and a bunch of really nice photo lights and we set up a nice photo shoot of all the trees that he'd made on tabletop. And it was Eno's idea to do this uh, sequence. We had the camera on a track and we moved the camera, I think like one inch, took a picture, one inch, took a picture. And that way, shooting that sequence and then keying it out, we were able to create this little animation where the tree is turning a little bit. So when I track the camera, I can play that animation back and the tree turns to create the illusion of a little bit of depth. So we only had two days to do all the blue screen shooting and the same two days, Cook and I were playing in a festival. And so, you know, he was, like finishing the cliff and the ground as I was doing some tracking video shots. And then we went off to go play the shows and Adam was finishing up doing the small trees and the ripped sky shots. So we did, we did everything like in those two days. It was just a really productive weekend. 
It was so well done and so cohesive with, with Adam's design that I completely forgot about that when we were watching the video. I just, I had initially assumed that was just something that he had thrown in the video until, of course, we got to the cliff scene. Then there was some discussion. Someone exclaimed something about like, oh, that's the, that's the cliff that Cook built. And I had that moment like, oh, wow, all, oh, all of this stuff is stuff that Cook built and that they filmed and then the animation is on top of it. Yeah, it was really incredible and like so, so seamless that I, you know, someone who is an insider totally forgot about it. So he, he really did a good job with that stuff. I told one of, one of the guys I work with at the office that it was a real model that, that Ian had built. And so then whenever anybody else was watching it over my shoulder, uh, he would point out, that, that cliff's a model. That's cool. That cliff's a model. That thing's real. <laughs> they really shot that. <laughs> it's just a really long process, and his planning had actually made it more efficient than it normally would be. Every second of this video that you see is the, is the result of hours and hours of work. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Every frame of this video, in which I think there are almost 5,000, is a representation of dozens and dozens of layers of work, dozens and dozens of processes that stack up one after another to finally bring you that end image. Near the end of Adam's long, lonely, and tedious animation process, Adam recruited some animator friends of his to help out. I had asked some friends to help, and I had helped for a bunch of days just doing rendering and, and stuff. I began to see the incredible detail involved with this, this project. Now that we have our character in, we're going to start bringing in some different levels of the sky coloring, the 3D clouds, inner shading for the clouds, more sky color, some watercolor texture, the background painting which Ian made, some more atmosphere, the 3D ground, the edge of the cliff, some different sprigs of grass, lots of tree bits, help feel like it's got some depth, and finally the end, sunlight. Give it a nice warm dusk glow. There were a lot of nice surprises in the video that weren't in the song. The instrumental sections that happen after each verse, and they have a little like ding at the end. And it's a little different the first and the second time. I love all those little details in the composition. The drums provided a lot of great cues. There was one where Bat is running and he grabs those leaves off the branch and the little twig is left wiggling. And I actually didn't plan it, but it times out perfectly with this little fill, the little snare fill that Sean does. So it's like. I think you really got what we were going for and. and without ever having a discussion with him at all, without saying like, hey Adam, you know, I did this drum fill because I thought that the, that the cassowary was doing this and the fruit bat was doing this, like, he just, he just got it. Adam came up with a lot of great visual elements to the story that aren't narrated in the song. Like the cassowary's methods of trying to fly, like stretching herself back between two trees. the camera sort of panning over to Bat on the other side of the river, trying to help her achieve the same thing by, you know, building this wing pattern. My favorite part of the video was seeing the computations inside Bat's head as he was making the wings for Cassowary. The flight portion of the song where the music kind of implies that they're off the ground and everything is wonderful, it was really well done. I mean, I don't think Adam could have done a better job. Nothing I would have imagined, but absolutely beautiful. I feel like that part practically did itself. That was written into the music from the very beginning. That was one of the moments that when I listened to the song, I just like saw it because it's, you just, to me, you listen to that song and you just hear that moment building and it's an obvious audio cue when she jumps off that cliff. 
actually making the animation for that part was the hardest part of the whole video, but it was the largest composition um, of any of the shots and the hundreds and hundreds of layers and um, light effects for the sun and dust clouds. And such a vast landscape with all the trees and all the ground. with this idea where they're sort of released into this dream world. She's realizing that this interplay between beings is what makes life wonderful. I really like the part of the song where she asks the fruit bat if she's dreaming, is it all a dream or is it happening? And his response, whether or not Cook intended this, is not, you're not dreaming. He just says that you're not asleep. Which is kind of like, yes, this is a dream, but it's a waking dream. It's, it's a transcendental moment, which you have achieved through the bridging of the existential gap between two people. Because you reached out to me, you know, I'm reaching out to you and now we're something greater than we were before. So that's why, you know, I'm personally moved by the song. Altogether, time-wise, has taken about between 15 and 1600 hours, spread out over the course of two years. Almost exactly. Yeah. How does that make you feel? <laughs> like, I can't believe what I did. <laughs> I can't believe that I even tried to do that. It's a real joy to see how the video turned out to see how the animation, to see Adam's work. For me, the reason for doing it was basically just to do it, to, to prove to myself I could do a, a project of this scale. My expectations for the video were completely exceeded by Adam's work. I think, I think it's incredible. I think he did an incredible job. I was really impressed with Adam's original ideas, but it was surprising to see how well he worked with collaborators while staying true to his original vision. It's been probably four years since I wrote the song, and two years about since Adam started the video, and I couldn't be happier. I knew it was gonna be awesome, um, but I, I love everything about it and <laughs> what it is.